Welcome back. And now time to launch into a first conversation. Well, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 elections, uh, Tiko Abubakar, has announced Ifani Okoa, governor of Delta State, as his running mate. Atiku made the announcement at a meeting attended by the PDP executives at the party's headquarters in Abuja. PDP National Chairman Iyoche Ayu said a 17-member committee had been set up by the party to pick a running mate while saying the party uh, committee had submitted three names to Atiku to choose from. The final decision, however, Ayu said, was Atiku's. Now, speaking at the announcement event, Atiku said that making the choice between the three names had been a difficult decision, while also noting that some of the qualities he looked out for include someone who understands the enormity of the challenges facing the country and one who has demonstrated from experience that he can proffer solutions. He also said he looked out for one who has the qualities of a president who can stand in for him when he is not around. Um, according to him, he said three names uh, while the three names are submitted and uh, that while they were all fully qualified, he had to settle for one who is a core. Let's, let's listen to what Atiku had to say at that announcement. All right, so that was the present presentation of um, uh, documents to Okoa having been uh, announced as the PDP uh, running mate to the PDP presidential candidate. And of course, uh, he accepted, had to accept uh, that uh, nomination. Uh, he was to face a screening committee of the party to formalize um, his, his uh, nomination. Well, we'd like to say the good morning and welcome to a public affairs analyst and our guest uh, on the program this morning who will be doing justice uh, to this topic, Mohammed Abdullahi. Mohammed, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Uh, good morning. Um, thanks for having me. Good morning, Nigeria. Did the People's Democratic Party and Dida Tuku Abubakar make the right choice in Ifan Yokoa? We told there were three names on the paper. Uh, three names on the table, uh, Ifan Yokoa, governor of Delta State, Emmanuel Odom, governor of Aquabum State, Yeson Wike, governor of River State. Did Okoa pick the best choice? Yeah, um, it's, it's a very challenging question. Uh, but I want to say there are three angles to what I feel. Uh, it might be my opinion, but I may be wrong and I may be right. One is the fact that uh, in every democracy, uh, popularity and population is very key everywhere, whether in Nigeria, America, mention it. Uh, so I was a bit baffled by the news yesterday uh, with the announcement of Okoa as the running mate of uh, Atiku. Don't get me wrong, uh, Okoa is very competent as well, but I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's relatively not known in the politics in Nigeria. In fact, as, a, as almost an eight-year governor now, I rarely see him in national news, you know? So it's, it's relatively unknown. That's one. I, and I feel that might be a disadvantage uh, to the, people, the People's Democratic Party. But again, uh, I think, and this is my opinion, I think why the president, I mean the presidential candidate of PDP picked him is because he's already foreseen uh, which I'm baffled about. He's already foreseen the fact that uh, probably he's becoming he's the next president and he wants to clear the hurdle of having a running mate that will give him a lot of trouble, uh, if you understand what I mean. And what I mean is that, you know, uh, uh, Governor Wike is the most popular uh, 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 candidate on that uh, list. You know, he's well known he's, uh, and he's very vocal. He's, uh, he's traversed this country in terms of even campaigning when he wanted to, when he, when he contested for, the, for being the uh, uh, flag bearer of the PDP. So I, I was a bit shocked when I realized that, uh, or when I had the news yesterday that Okoa was picked. And I was surprised because if you understand what I'm saying, I think it is better to have someone who will help the party win the election rather than you foreseeing 
what might be the problem uh, uh, when you guys, I mean, when the party becomes or win the election, because you have not done that yet. You need someone who is very popular, who is very vocal, who in fact has the wherewithal in terms of finances as well to back the, the party. I think there's a mistake there, is my opinion, like I mentioned. But again, realize that there are challenges uh, and, and our own democracy is very unique. You realize in 2007, uh, the same People's Democratic Party led by the then former president, uh, Olusha Gomabasanjo, from nowhere, even though Peter Odili was the most popular candidate then of the PDP, who was the then governor of River State, was the front runner to become the next uh, flag bearer of the party. But from nowhere, the then president, Olusha Gombasonjo, picked a relatively unknown as well uh, governor uh, in, the, in the person of late uh, uh, former president, Omar Yaradua, and he won the presidency. In fact, they also picked, the party also picked another relatively unknown state governor, then in Bayelsa State, the former president, Jonathan, uh, to become his running mate. But mind you, in these two scenarios, then PDP was the ruling party. Now, PDP is an opposition party. So there are, even though you, there are a bit of similarities, but there are differences. So I, I was shocked by the, by, by the announcement yesterday of Okoa. I feel, and I think, uh, Wiki would have been a better and a more popular one in it. All right. Uh, um, indeed, you've, you've, you've uh, given a very interesting uh, uh, perspective, both sides, um, Article looking at what will happen when he becomes president versus what needs to happen before he becomes president, which is to actually win the election. And some have said this will be the most keenly contested election in Nigeria's um, history, at least uh, since the return to democracy in 1999. But let's look at some of the, uh, the qualities, uh, about 12 of them Atiku had listed as uh, the the qualities of a potential vice president that endeared Okoa to him uh, and informed his decision or choice of Ifan Okoa. Um, we hear that the governors, uh, uh, we hear that the, the National Working Committee, rather, of the party had um, uh, voted, and all those who had to vote, um, about 17 man committee, they had voted 13 to 3 in favor of Wiki. That's a wide margin, but Atiku still insisted on picking uh, uh, Okoa. What, what do you think this says? No, I think this is uh, still part of the gimmicks and the running battle that uh, the PDP has been having with the uh, I mean, majority of the governors, you recall even the governor of uh, Edo State, you know, who was once an APC stalwart before the campaign to PDP, uh, uh, and later on accusing Wiki as being like uh, imposing himself as the chairman of the party. Let me use that word, you know? So uh, in terms of character and in terms of relationship, uh, Governor Wiki has had uh, a kind of fictional relationship with his uh, colleagues. And that was what, in my opinion, please, played out yesterday. But I think, like I, like I said earlier, the party is making a, a, a big mistake. You understand? Because I felt uh, as an opposition party, they should have been able to iron things out and look at uh, the perspective of winning the election and who is able to, uh, because as an opposition party, the, the, the dynamics is quite different from being an incumbent party with power. So you must look at all angles and what scenarios will play better, who and who will be able to help you clinch uh, the winning ticket, rather than you know trying to sideline one of your most important and most popular candidates. Remember, this is the very first time that uh, Governor Wiki uh, contested, you know, to become uh, the presidential flag bearer of PDP. And he came not too distant second to an Atiku uh, who has, uh, you know, this is like his fourth or fifth time in uh, contesting. So that speaks a whole lot of volume. If the party, you know, understand that, that this man has what it takes. You might not like his character, you might not like his outburst, but to some extent, it seems he is very popular. It seems it seems this is the kind of person probably uh, some form uh, Nigerians uh, are yearning for. So uh, in trying to sideline him, I mean, you, you, you look at the clips yesterday. He was not present at the declaration ceremony. What does that tell you? That tells you that there's a bit of acrimony 
that tells you that there's a bit of disagreement and that can cost the party uh, the winning formula come the general election. All right. I, uh, I, I think, the, I, in my opinion, I think, I think the party is, is wrong. All right. Uh, so, so what does it say? What do you think will be the effect on the party moving forward that of those who were given the responsibility, uh, the responsibility to vote for uh, who should be recommended to Atiku as his running mate? It was an overwhelming, according to reports, uh, vote in favor of Wiki. We hear it was 13 in support of Wiki, 3 in support of Wiki, yet article went against that. Mm. Uh, what do you think the implications of this will be for the PDP moving forward? Is it that the party the is, is not going to be divided? It's going to be divided. This is the beginning of an implosion of the party or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very possible. It's very possible. Like I mentioned earlier, Wiki was not there. So that's, that tells you there's an acrimony, there's a disagreement in the party. And as, a, as, as, a, as an opposition party going, you know, into an all-important general election, you don't want to have that kind of acrimony. You don't want to have your house divided because it tells, it, 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 it makes you weaker and give more advantage to the already a powerful incumbent party. You know, the, the, the incumbent party is already powerful because of, you know, our kind of system here. So as an opposition party, if your house is, if your house is already divided, you know, that is a big, big problem. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, like you mentioned that it might, it might divide the party. Again, they might face a very daunting challenge going into the general election, uh, which the, the party do not want to, to, to face at the moment. At the temperament and uh, uh, the the perception of both individuals, Okoa and Wiki, uh, let's not forget that uh, Malu Udom was somewhere in the conversation. He was there at that uh, that event while Wiki wasn't, like you rightly said. Uh, Atiku says that you know that um, he made it very clear to you know the National Working Committee of the PDP, the Board of Trustees of the PDP, and other leaders as they, he sought their input and wisdom uh, in consultations that his running mate would have would need to have the potential to succeed him at a moment's notice. Uh, that he, uh, whoever it will be as vice president or his running mate, would be president in waiting. That even though you're vice president, you're still president in waiting, and you need to have the ability to su su succeed him uh, at a moment's notice. He says, in other words, the person must have the qualities to be president. You must be presidential. Uh, the person must have an appreciation of the deep rot which our country has been put into by the rudderless APC government. He talked about um, uh, the fact that they must have uh, uh, little or no drama. Whilst buzz, it's important to have buzz as part of a campaign, you know, and uh, you know, excitement, but you know, there is no room for drama. And Nigerians are looking for someone who is serious because of the serious issues that are facing the country today. But do you think Wiki's um, dramatic style and, uh, you know, his... Um, his, his uh, charismatic posture, his outspoken nature on various issues, even as far as going after his opponents like Atiku and even his fellow governors, calling them names. You know what happened between himself and uh, the Edo State Governor Baseki and, and Co. Do you think that this worked against him? Yes, uh, I quite agree. But uh, let me take us back to between 1999 and 2007, when he himself, Atiku Abubakar, was uh, the vice president to Olusegun Obasanjo. You remember the so many scenarios of uh, uh, acrimony between them. In fact, it got so heated that the president almost got him impeached, you know, but for, him, for, 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 for his doggedness as well. So I felt Atiku should have had a lot of experience. He himself exhibited no loyalty then to his to his boss, you understand? So he it is is the same thing he's scared of. It's the same thing he's afraid of that a, a governor wiki will be a big challenge to him, you know, while in office. But you know, you always get you you always cross the bridge when you get to that same bridge. You don't just make projections when you are at one. Then you are making projections at, at when you get uh, you know how to overcome 10, when you have not even overcome one. That's why I said in your first question, I said they are already looking at if we win, we are already in office. 
we think Governor Wiki will be so dramatic. We think it will be challenging, controlling him in terms of loyalty and so on. But no, you have not won. You are yet to win the election. And winning the election is the most important thing first that will now lead to you talking about your vice president being loyal. So I felt, yeah, you, you uh, like you rightly mentioned, Governor Wiki's outburst, his character, his relationship with his colleagues is not a smooth one. But that there, there should be like maybe I mean I mean the National Working Committee of the PDP or even the high echelons of the PDP that will sit him down, you know, as a governor and as a member of the party who has pledged to be part of the party, even though he lost out in the presidential uh, primaries, to say he will be part of the part of the party. Then sit him down and then talk to him, explain things to him and how they can work together harmoniously to clinch the ticket. Because the most important thing at the moment is for the opposition party to get the ticket. All other things are secondary. But I, what the, the party is doing at the moment is placing the secondary, uh, what is, secondary challenges as the primary challenge, which I think for me is, uh, is, is absurd. All right, let's look at the qualities of uh, Okoa and what he brings uh, to, as far as you're concerned, to the campaign. Um, we'll start with some of the, um, you know, talk that has been going around chatter. Um, Emmanuel Oduagan has been trending uh, throughout yesterday, even till this morning. Oduagan is still trending. A lot of people who are from Delta State or who know about Delta State, uh, most of them are, it's been a, a divided opinion, let's say that, uh, between the uh, supporters of Okoa who feel he has done well and uh, those who uh, feel that Udo Okoa killed the gains that Delta State made under Ibori and under uh, Uduagan. I, I will read one of those tweets. This one says, um, uh, Okoa killed the scholarships board. This is from Maurice Moy on Twitter. It says, Okoa killed the scholarships board in Delta State. Uh, during Oduagan, all first-class graduates got five million naira cash for postgraduate studies. I know a boy that cashed that money, gave his family two million naira, and used the rest to travel out for studies. Um, a number of people talked about the death of the scholarship uh, uh, scheme. Someone who goes by the name of uh, uh, Cross Media Hub says, um, "My friend was a benefactor of that scheme for first-class deltans in Nigeria. In Nigeria, in Oduagan's last year in office as governor." Emmanuel Dwagan personally handed them their checks of five million naira and told them, I'm not sure my successor will carry on uh, with this. Several of um, reports, you know, talking about how Okoa has not been able to keep up with infrastructural development and all that. Um, uh, are you aware of his performance as governor of Delta State? And do you think that he's the requisite experience, like I talked about some of the things that the vice president should possess to bring to the table um, and as, as, as running mate? Yeah, um, it's a bit confusing because, um, like I mentioned earlier, he's someone who I see more as a uh, very silent governor. Um, he's not really in the national conversations. Uh, I take my time a lot to, to uh, watch um, national news in Nigeria, read the newspapers, but he's someone who is not, um, who is not very outspoken, who is not very yeah, out there. Who is not very visible, uh, even though I know there are one or two programs that talk about his uh, uh, achievement and what he is doing uh, for the youth, particularly. I must confess, I've seen one or two videos, programs, uh, and articles uh, talking about how he's uh, developing the youth in Delta. I've never been to Delta myself, but I've, I've, I've seen in, on national TVs and read in uh, on the pages of newspapers some of the programs and uh, that he's been carrying out for, for youth in Delta. But uh, having said that, uh, I think for me, um, he's, he's not popular. He's not one that, uh, that traverses uh, our nation. He's not a name that you mentioned, probably say in Sokoto or even in Oshun, or uh, even in Lagos, popularly, and you say, Governor Ifan Yokoa, and people who like, who are you talking about, you know? Uh, but, uh, of competence, definitely. If you have been, if you are a governor in Nigeria, particularly for a state like Delta, which is one of our rich oil uh, states, definitely you are you, you can you are you are, you are even good to to be our president. So I'm not discountenance. Uh, I can't discountenance his uh, competence, his ability uh, personally, and what he's what he has done for his people. 
but I'm just scared that uh, he's not that popular uh, for what he's being called for. But definitely, he's competent, competent to take uh, to take up the mantle. All right. Finally, finally, you've talked about um, you know his popularity and the popularity of Yeson Wiki is a, a national a national appeal and ability to woo votes to the PDP. Uh, some people have said that Okoa being a Niger Delta can secure the South South for the PDP again. Uh, being also a Delta Igbo um, uh, native, he can also secure the Southeast uh, for the PDP, despite Peter B's emergence and the surge of uh, 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 support for him. Remind, remind, reminding us that his name is uh, Ifai uh, to start with. Do you think this holds mm. true, despite what you've said? Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it very much. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Southeast, one, one of the one of the big challenges there, even though they are clamoring to be presidents, uh, to produce the president of Nigeria, is the fact they are so divided. They are so divided. In the same Southeast, you have uh, the PDP, you have uh, APC, you have ABGA, and so many of the stalwarts uh, uh, from that region belong to these three political parties. So it's very challenging for, every, for anyone to, you know, to, to outrightly convince uh, uh, their citizens and their, the people over there to vote en mass and block for one party. You realize in so many of our elections in the past, the votes over there are always divided. Yeah, the PDP holds a lot uh, and then APGA, but uh, with people like Rochas and all others in APC and even some governors now uh, in APC like Emo State uh, from the Southeast is, 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 is gradually becoming very challenging for uh, presidential candidates from that region or from any region to pull and block uh, votes from that region. So it's going to be challenging. It's very possible, but it's going to be very challenging. And uh, we'll, we'll all live, we'll all pray to live to see how that unfolds in the coming general elections. All right. It's geared up to be a very interesting campaign period, uh, about nine months to the election proper. Um, Musa Mohammed Abdullah, it's been a thrill having you. Thank you for joining us with your expert analysis. Good morning. Well, the English Premier League is uh, around the corner, though the teams and the players are on break, but the EPL has released fixtures. I'll be back after this short break to discuss this with our, our guest analyst. Please stay with us. <laughs>